Hey guys, welcome back. This is part two of the XL500 project. Um, it's going to be a short video this week. Uh, it's it's kind of been hard to get content because a lot of stuff I've been waiting for uh, came a little later in the mail. And a lot of the process with the tank is kind of boring to film, but I did I did get the gist of it for you guys to see what, what, I'm, what I'm attempting. And... Um, yeah, I got the carbon on this video and the throttle cable. I mean, nothing earth shattering. I already got it to spark. So really once um, once I get a fuel tank uh, hooked up to it so I can get some gas into the carb, it shouldn't be long before I can fire it up at least. And I'm gonna shoot for that for next video. So um, this is kind of a work up to that. So I apologize for the lack of content. It's just been a slow process this week. Plus I've been busy. So um yeah, sit back and enjoy, and keep in mind, there will be more on the next one. This is just kind of, uh, I think once the ball gets rolling past this one and the fuel tank's good to go, it'll it'll be happening quickly. So um, thanks again for watching. If you're not a subscriber, please uh, hit that subscribe button. Leave me likes, comments. Let me know what you think. Let me know what I'm doing wrong. All that good stuff. So, all right, thanks again for watching, and let's get into this. Well, unfortunately, the rust is worse than I expected on here. Uh, peeled back some of the bad paint, kind of scuffed it up, and I got some pretty decent uh, holes here. So I don't know if the sealer is going to do anything with that or if it'll even be worth trying to seal it, but I am going to soak this in vinegar, uh, kind of twist it upright and put it in a bucket with vinegar, like maybe fill it up to here, uh, the bucket itself. That way this is all submerged. It can get in on here and from the inside out and let it sit a couple days and see what I got after that. All right, so I got this side bathing in vinegar. <clears throat> I'm gonna let that sit a couple days and see what kind of condition that metal's in. All right, so after letting the uh, vinegar sit a couple days in there, I'm gonna dump it out into this other bucket and start the cleanup process to uh, seal the bottom off so I can put more vinegar in to um, get all the, the rust that's up top as well. All right, so I'm gonna run some water through this and um, get the vinegar out. And I'm probably gonna scrape some more of this just to make sure there's no more rust holes. Uh, put some, maybe some duct tape or something on here just to seal it up while I fill it up again with vinegar to get the stuff up top that it couldn't get before because it would leak out. Just gonna scrape some more dead paint off and try to, try to get down to uh, uh, more solid metal here before I figure out how I'm gonna patch this up. I think I'm gonna use All right, so I've had the vinegar soaking in the tank for the last 48 hours or so. Um, I have my tape on the side to cover the rust holes that are on the bottom left side and I'm gonna add some wood screws in there, shake it around, get all the loose stuff out of there, and then drain out the uh, uh, vinegar again and rinse with water. 
Mainly focusing on the uh, bottom section of the tank where it seems like most of the condensation was laying, causing that rust on the side here. I'm gonna go back and forth a couple times, flip it on its side. So I got a makeshift dryer leaning up against the tank to um, kind of let that go, try to prevent flash rust here. I'm gonna let this let this dry this out. This actually puts out heat as well on this fan. So some more air going into the tank, getting that dried up so I could prep it for the uh, attempted repair on this garbage right here. Don't know if it's gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. So I'm gonna let that dry. And next up, I'm ready to put in the degreaser, um, the port 15 degreaser with a quart of warm water uh, after I sealed up the tank on the side with the duct tape and also the pedicock opening. So I'm going to dump this stuff in with another quart of water, slosh it around for 30 minutes, I think it says. Um, yeah, for about 30 minutes, uh, just making sure that it gets through all the sides and crevices and everything. And then once that's done, I'm going to dump it out and flush it with water, which then I prepare for the step after that, the metal prep. So first things first, degreaser, slosh it around with water and flush it out and on to step two. All right, pouring the degreaser in. water going in all right so it's been about a half hour sloshing that around I'm gonna drain it out and then I'm gonna use some water to uh, flush it out All right, moving on to step three. I'm gonna be ready to getting ready to put the uh, metal prep in. Um, so I already uh, sealed this off again after doing the degreaser uh, for the holes that are on the side, and also I found a couple more on the bottom. So this just keeps getting worse and worse. Don't know how well this is gonna work, but I'm gonna try it. I got the kit here. I'm just gonna do it and see how well it holds. Hopefully it'll hold. Um, and if it doesn't, I'll just cut it out and get somebody to weld it. But I'm going to give it a try. So for this next part, it wants you to um, pour the entire bottle of the metal prep in and leave it on one side every half hour and, and turn it just so it gets everywhere. So I'm going to start off probably doing it on the side here. I'm going to avoid this end first or save this end for last just in case it starts leaking out. That way I don't lose it right off the bat. Um, I'm going to put it in a plastic uh, container just in case it does leak because you can reuse this stuff. So um, that way when it comes out or if it comes out, I'll just throw it back in the bottle and use it for the next tank I do. 
But uh, all right, I'm going to start with that next. around for a little bit and then I'll start laying it on its sides on all angles and timing it and then moving it every half hour to a different angle. All right I'm gonna start my timer for a half hour on my phone and come back and move it to the other side. Countdown begins. Time to flip the donuts. All right, I think I'm gonna just put it on its back, upside down here. Next. All right, I'm going to dump out the metal prep that's in here. It's been sitting for a few hours, uh, every half hour in different spots. So I'm going to dump that out because you can reuse it. And I'll save it. Let's give it one more quick flush around. After this is emptied, it wants you to rinse with um, uh, warm water. And then it's got to be bone dry for the final stage. But before I do all that, i got to try to patch the side. The, uh, as I mentioned before, the, I called, I actually called up Poor 15's technical assistance to ask them what their recommendation was on that. And they said to do all the, seal the holes off with duct tape and do all the internal stuff. And then, uh, <clears throat> before you seal it, use the, uh, the mesh that comes with the kit and try to patch the, the holes along the sides. And then the ones I found on the bottom too. So, like I said, I don't know how well this is going to work. I know a lot of metal fab guys are probably watching, cringing. You know, they could probably weld this up pretty easily. And I do have a friend that welds really well. But um, I kind of want to get this thing done for uh, um, mid-Ohio, get it riding around, see how well it holds. And like I said, if it if it leaks, I'll just I'll end up welding it if I have to. I'm getting my buddy to weld it. So I'm going to drain this out now and rinse her out. All right, got a heat gun on it, gonna dry it out completely and then start working on uh, patching that side up before I put the sealer in the tank. But uh, it came out really clean on the inside after the metal prep. So hopefully this works. And while I was working on the tank, I had some parts arrive here. I got the air filter element. I got a spark plug and a spark plug boot, which as you remember was melted on there. And I also got the new throttle cable as well. So I'm just gonna, uh, uh, still gonna take the carb over to my friend's house to get the, uh, to throw it in the ultrasonic and uh, get that cleaned up and then I'll put it on and use some kind of makeshift fuel tank because the one I currently have is going to be down for quite a while and uh, see if I can get some get some life out of this thing. All right, while I'm waiting for the tank to dry out, I'm going to remove the throttle housing here and get it ready for the new uh, throttle cable. PB Blaster does the trick every time. 
this out of here. There we go. Just gotta remember to get these little spacers off the other end that go in the carburetor. Like these three right here. I don't know if I can get those off. Yeah, I should be able to get those off. And next up, just gonna put the new cable in through the uh, the housing here. Just gonna figure out what direction these ones go. I think it's only one way. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's right. All right, so that's the way it's supposed to be. Put this back on the handlebars, get the throttle assembly on, and get that carb ready. All right, got my car back from my buddy's ultrasonic cleaner, and I'm getting ready to put it back together, throw it back on the bike. Did a pretty good job, which it always does. Um, all this stuff had varnish and just crud all over it, and it cleaned it up pretty well. So all the little bits I got, jets, seals, all the uh, all the small, small bits are in this container. So I'm going to spread it out and... Uh, Start putting it back together here. That's the one I was worried about right there. Got it. <clears throat> All right. Clean this up a little bit more. Out of carb cleaner. Oops. So I don't wait to do that. Put this part on here first.
put a little bit of uh just a little dab of lube on there just so this pivots in there a little smoother <clears throat> little o-ring Clean up this plunger here a little bit. Make sure this slides in there nice and smooth. some of that corrosion off of there kind of give it a quick scrub with the uh, scrubby pad about as good as it's going to get right there. That'll go in last, I think. <clears throat> if I remember correctly. Okay, next up, I'm going to do the float. Oh, I forgot the spring on the... Uh,
whatchamacallit. I remember this pin was a little hard coming out, so I might have to uh, tap that in there. Maybe not. There we go. try to reuse this gasket that was on here. I don't know if, if I have much luck with it, but um, I don't think I needed a rebuild kit. And I don't want to get a rebuild kit just for that one gasket. So let's see if this, uh, see if this works with the old one. So I really won't know until it's running.
Oops. My Lord. Good Lord, wrong screws. All right, she's ready to go back on the bike. Get those routed here in a second. I'm just gonna get this thing tightened down.
All right, making my way back to the carburetor and the intake boot. I'm gonna start putting that back together, clean this up a little bit. Put a little repair on here with some silicone. Um, this was all torn open, just letting air pass the uh, pass the boot, I'm not going through the filter, which wouldn't have been good. So I just kind of globbed some uh, silicone on there and sealed it up, and we'll see how well that works. Not the prettiest looking fix, but it's all I had at the moment. I'm going to heat up the uh, the boot just a little bit with a heat gun just to make it a little more soft and easier to put that carb in because it just did not want to slide in there. There we go. I'm going to use that same method on the rear boot. I'm going to get this nice and soft with the heat gun, and hopefully it'll just slide right into place. Um, I know I need to get a um, clamp for here still, but um, I'm going to at least place it on, and I can always do that part later. All right, I'm gonna try to figure out the uh, cables next, one for the uh, choke and then the two throttle cables. Choke's easy. <clears throat> I say that now, but. Let's see how much slack it gives me. All right, I'm leaving off on this part here. I got the carb in. Uh, there's a couple things I still got to do with the carb before I can uh, try to fire it up. Uh, for one thing, I have these little spacers that came off of the, uh, the stock cables uh, that sit on the throttle cable and kind of hold it up against this bracket here um, to, to keep it from sliding around, I think, and just stabilize it. So when you're pulling on the throttle, it doesn't twist around. So I pulled these off of the, um, the stock one just by cutting the end of the cable. So what I'm going to do is cut a notch just big enough on the bottom, the flat spot there, so that I can slide it through this cable here and then put it on the new, the new cable itself. Um, so I'm going to do that and... Also, is left. All that's left here is the um, the oil separator, which is just basically hooking it up and then cut, getting a couple hose clamps. Uh, speaking of hose clamps, I need to get one here and try to get that seated on there a little better before I clamp it down. Uh, but I'm probably just going to use a regular 
hose clamp um, for now until I can find it OEM style. Um, and then the, uh, the fuel tank is on its final stage of part two, um, twisting it around, getting it, uh, getting the metal prep in all the crevices and stuff for a half hour on each side. Uh, it's on the last leg of that now. So it's just a really long process. It's taken longer than expected um, to get parts and stuff that I was waiting for for this. And, um, you know, I'm going to throw this all on a video and hopefully it's enough to <clears throat> uh, keep people satisfied till the next one. Hopefully the next one I'll have it running. I thought I'd have it running for this one, but you know how that goes. So, um, yeah, stay tuned. I'm going to have, uh, I'll have more together for you on the next one. I'm trying to keep my, my tradition going at least one video a week, um, on a, on a bike, on a project. So, um, yeah, next one, I think, I'd like to say I'd like to have it running for the next one. At least at least getting it firing over a couple times. Um, I know I won't be able to use the tank probably in the next one. I'll just use a tank off of, uh, off of another bike. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.